Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Today I have Michael Conti. He is um, an ultra cyclist, a USANA athlete from Utah. Utah. How are you today, Michael? I'm good. How are you? Great. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm 46. Uh, I've been a USANA athlete for two years now. Um, I've been an ultra cyclist for about five years. Uh, I compete in uh, long distance cycling events, so anything over 200 miles. Uh, most of the time they consider ultras 400 miles plus. Uh, so uh, my event this uh, past uh, summer was uh, 3,000 miles across America from Oceanside, California to Annapolis, Mar uh, Annapolis Maryland, uh, where I finished in the top five and was the top American finisher. So. That's a long distance, 3,000 miles across the country. That is definitely long distance, and congratulations on that. And what inspired you to become a uh, cyclist? You know, I've been cycling uh, pretty much my whole life, but uh, I've done a lot of Ironman triathlons and stuff like that. But I had a goal to cycle from Salt Lake City to Las Vegas, which is a 500-mile race. I did it as a team before and as a two-man team. Uh, but I wanted to do it solo in 2014. I, I did it solo and kind of got the bug uh, to keep doing it. So I do a lot of uh, events um, here on the West Coast um, that are, you know, basically Ram races. The Race Across America puts on a bunch of shorter races, and I do a bunch of those. Perfect. Um, so do you just compete within the United States, or do you also compete um, outside? Ultra cycling, I've just done in the United States because Ram, the Race Across America, is the biggest event uh, from Oceanside to Annapolis, Maryland. So that that had been a goal of mine. Uh, you know, the ultra cycling, you, the, the the premise behind it is pushing limits, seeing what your what your body can do. Um, most people, you know, think of a marathon as the is the furthest you know uh, running race, but now they have ultra marathons and people are running fifty miles, hundred miles. Um, Cycling is the same way we kind of compare a marathon and running to 100 miles on the bike. Um, and most of my training days are 100 miles once it gets to be springtime and I'm outside again. Um, so that's, you know, typical rate, uh, training week for me is four or 500 miles on the bike. Wow. And I know that um, we just, we were talking earlier today and you had an hour and a half ride. Um, you were just saying it's an hour and a half. To you, that's a breeze. To me, that's a little bit of a stretch. But do you have tips for someone who wants to get into cycling, how they can, you know, stretch it out for themselves and, you know, make sure that they've, they're prep properly prepped and geared and all of that stuff? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like if, if friends running in a marathon, I, I know what it's like to run a marathon. Do I like running them? No, it's not my passion. Uh, everything starts with baby steps. You know, an hour and a half on the trainer for me is – uh, it's a workout. Uh, you know, coach gives me a workout and it's I sit in front of a computer and a TV and, and I go do my workout for an hour and a half because I have a goal next year of doing uh, a bunch more four or 500, 600 mile races. So I've got a calendar. Uh, I think I've got five races on the calendar. Um, but I take it to the extreme. So, uh, you know, I, I love when people are doing a 20 mile race, 30 mile race. It's, it's all about baby steps and working your way up. Um, you know, I encourage people to start with, you know, going out and, and, and riding, you know, 30, you know, a couple, whatever it is, an hour, um, and spending time outside on a bike. Um, you know, as far as gear goes, you, you kind of get into the sport and just kind of build onto it. I, I've got a, a garage full of bikes, so it's it's not, can't say you will buy this or do this. It's, it's a matter of getting out there and doing it. It's kind of like starting a company. First thing you do is get out and start it, mm -hmm. um, just like with riding or running or doing anything outside. So now, is there a difference? Do you prefer flat terrain or do you uh, prefer mountainous terrains? Well, unfortunately, these races go kind of, since they're long distance, you have some flat sections and some hilly sections. I have a race in Oregon um, that we've got uh, 600 miles and I think 40,000 feet of climbing. So it's a lot of climbing. Um, and I'm a heavier cyclist. Um, I know my wife makes fun of me about that because I'm not fat. But I'm just a bigger guy. Most of the guys I race are, are little, little super skinny guys. So climbing for me takes a little more of a discipline. So right now I'm on the trainer, and, and then uh, 
uh, pretty soon I'll, I'll, you know, once spring time comes around, I'll, I'll be out in the mountains. And, and since I live in Park City, I kind of like the mountains now. Mm -hmm. um, it's a fun challenge. Um, you know, anything flat's kind of, you know, it's monotonous. So I, you know, racing across America, we got to Kansas and I was bored out of my mind. It was just, just flat and straight and boring. Uh, but you know, I kind of like the mountains of Colorado and different terrain. So that almost sounds like, you know, going from Cal for us here in Vancouver or in Canada, going to Calgary to Edmonton to Saskatchewan, that terrain is so flat. It's so boring. It's so dry. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy because out of Calgary to the east, it's all flat, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the same as Kansas. It's boring. You know, you go west, and it's a whole other story from, from, from Calgary. So in the places that you've actually been to, what's your favorite place that you've traveled? Or uh, ridden your bike, I should say. Hmm. You know, in the, in the race across America, I, I was in the Appalachian Mountains and in the east coast. Now, mind you, that race is a nonstop race. I did it in 11 days and five hours across the United States. Wow. Um, so it's not like a tour that people will take a month or two to do. Um, I want to go back and see the Appalachian Mountains. It was just absolutely gorgeous. It was, uh, you know, m minus the rain, it was, it was just beautiful, green, just amazing. I, I kind of want to go back there, so. Perfect. Um, so what's your normal day? What does it look like? And how many hours do you train? Yeah, so a normal day for me, well, I'm retired. Um, so a normal day for me is is get up and, and uh, try and get my workouts done, depending on what the coach has. I'm kind of in my off season right now. Um, after the race across America, it took me about three months to recover. Um, I had some issues with my hands um, and pretty much didn't want to see the bike after, <laughs> after riding 3,000 miles, to be honest. Uh, so I, I took some time off, and now I'm just getting back into it. So right now I think I'm on 15 hours a week of training. Um, and that'll build up, and you know, as I get towards March or April, um, I'm about 25, 30 hours a week of training. So I try and get it done early. If I don't get it done early, like three o'clock comes around, four o'clock comes around, and I've still got three hours to do, it just becomes a, it becomes a mind game, and I just keep pushing off. So typically, first thing, get up, get something to eat, um, get on the bike, or go to the gym. So I went to the gym this morning before getting on the bike. So. Each day is different, and as soon as we get some more snow here, I'll be out skiing and, and doing some cross-country skiing. Uh, it's not just about the bike. It's, it, there's other things so okay. uh, <laughs> that help, you know, help me as an athlete um, and be a better athlete. I like hiking. I mean, I like doing a lot of different things. Perfect. So now, do you have a specific regimen that you follow? Yeah, I mean, well, I like coffee in the morning before I work out. I typically have a – I use uh, a USANA whey protein, and I have I mix a smoothie. I've got a Ninja mixer. I add about a cup and a half of uh, mixed berries, frozen out of the freezer because it's easy. I'm not going to cut anything up fresh. I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm too lazy, but it's just easier to grab them out of the freezer. Uh, I add two bananas. I add a, a packet of the whey protein. I get them in the, the 28 packets, I believe, in a in a box, and. Um, and add water to that and add the USANA probiotic. So I do that every morning. It's kind of my, my go-to to get myself going in the morning along with my coffee. Perfect. I keep them on my bike. And then after that, I eat again. Either I have another protein shake or get some solid food in me. Because, um, you know, as an athlete, you, you've got to eat. It's not a weight loss um, regimen. I mean, your, your body still needs to eat. There's, there's mm -hmm. certain mechanics to go through. Um, it was crazy going across America. I was burning 10 to 12,000 calories every 24 hours. And I was only able to get in about 8,000 calories. It's just trying to eat so much um, is it, hard. And it's hard on the digestive system. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of my regimen. And then uh, during the day I do, you know, do some, you know, do some things, a some little bit of work. Uh, even though I'm retired, I still do things so I don't get bored. And then, uh, you know, even it, during the summer at night, you know, my friends and I will go get back on the bike and go mountain biking around mm -hmm. here. So it's super, super nice around here. Perfect. Well, you've retired pretty young, which is yeah. always nice. Yeah, I was. Uh, I owned a furniture company here in Park City for 25 years. Um, okay. And I sold the company in February. Someone wanted it more than I did. so. I, Perfect. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, now it, it affords me the luxury of being a dad. And like my, my daughter's a freshman in high school. And uh, my wife's son is a freshman also in high school. So 
I run a, I run a, a lot of shuttles, you know, dance shuttles for the girls and, and that kind of stuff. And uh, it allows me to do what I like, and that's travel. So, I mean, when you ask, you know, my most favorite place, I've climbed uh, four of the seven summits around the world. So, you know, being in Antarctica and being in Nepal, those are kind of my favorite, you know, places. And, and I look forward to doing more travel. I was just in Mexico uh, last week before Thanksgiving. So I have a house down there and I was down there. So traveling is key, but you know, also taking care of myself is key. So now do you take any supplements from USANA or from anywhere else? Well, I take, yeah. So USANA, you know, being a USANA athlete, I, I take the USANA supplements. Um, you know, I believe in them because it's trusted, it's tested. Um, and I'm also a tested athlete uh, per the, the RAM organization. So I can be pulled from a race and tested. Um, so trusting their products is key. I take the vitamins twice a day, the My Health Pack. I get a box of that every month. Um, and then, you know, I have the probiotics, which I like to help keep my gut in check, uh, especially traveling to different countries. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then I, I always keep a, a packet, of, and I'm not sure the name is, little vitamin C packs. Because um, when our kids come home sick or something like that, it's, it's one of those things that scare me. So we're all, on, we're, we're, we're all taking those. Uh, you know, and the kids, the kids love them, which is Perfect. great. Easy so, to get them to be on those. So, um, can you just explain to everyone what it is to be a, um, a tested athlete? Because not many people know what that is. Yeah, luckily I'm not tested like uh, the winter athletes are, or like a professional cyclist is. I'm just on a program that I can possibly be tested. So. Okay. Um, unfortunately in sports nowadays, it, it people like to cheat. Um, you, you, I mean, cycling is cycling and cross country skiing. I mean, during the Olympics, you always hear about it. You know, the Russians did this mm -hmm. or someone did this or, or whatever. Now think about it. Um, sports drinks. So I use a product uh, from first endurance, um, for all my, you know, uh, electrolyte, you, you know, needs. Back, you know, 20, 30 years ago, we didn't have that. So it's almost like electrolyte drinks are cheating, but no, not really. You're just able to take care of your body more because of the science. And we understand science a little bit better. Um, but, yeah, you get tested for, you know, testosterone, EPO, just all that kind of stuff. They'll run, you know, if they do a test on me, they'll, they'll send it off to the uh, USADA, the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency. Mm -hmm. uh, so the good thing is, is taking – products from a known company like USANA, I, you know, I know that I would test, test clean. So I don't have any uh, issues that I was taking some protein powder off the shelf that's made in a plant that makes something else that has testosterone or something else in it that's contaminated. Um, living here in Utah, it's great. I, you know, before I became a USANA athlete, I got a tour of the, of the, the factory here. And, oh, man, it's amazing just, just what they do there. Um, and, and how the products are made and, and how clean it is and, and just the, the science and the systems behind it. So before you sauna, were you using some, anything else, any supplements before? Yeah, just off the shelf stuff. I mean, just your typical off the shelf uh, vitamins and, and whatever protein powder was in the, was in the, uh, was in the, the pantry. So now having used something off the shelf and having used USANA, do you see a difference in your performance? Do you see a difference in your body? Um, yeah. Well, for me, it's consistency. I stay healthier, number one. Number two, I like the products. So like a protein shake in the morning, you know, I'm, I'm not a fan of just going eating a banana, right? It's just not my thing to go – I. I like I say, go back to being lazy. I think that's why a lot of us are so unhealthy is because you go to the first thing, which is chips or anything that's really, if I don't have to make it, it's easier. So for me, like having a USANA, like having the whey protein in my shake, I like it. It tastes good. Um, I get two bananas to start my day. I get a bunch of, of uh, you know, berries, you know, uh, blueberries and, and strawberries. So what happened was, is this past winter, um, I didn't gain a lot of weight, which typically over the winter, I'm not on the bike a lot. I'm in my off season. I tend to put on yeah, like 10, 15 pounds, which for me is not that big of a deal because as soon as I start to get back on the bike and start ramping up 400 miles a week, the weight comes right off. I mean, it's, it's, it's about a half a pound a day I can lose. And I'm not trying to lose it. It's just because I'm getting that exercise. Well, 
during the off season, having, you know, the, the protein shakes and having the vitamins, I stayed healthier and I didn't add the weight on this year. I, I, I think I went up, uh, let's say I raised at 171. I, I think I barely got up to 180. I mean, it might have added half the weight this year, seven, eight pounds. Um, just by sticking in a regimen of something that I like and it, it kept me in, in a routine. Excellent. Um, so do you have any tips for, um, you know, our viewers as to what they can do when they're working? I know you did mention earlier, but keep in mind that some of them are still just starting out. So a full like, As far as like working out and stuff like that? Working out, um, eating. So, I, you know, in my experience, I'm not a dietitian or anything like that. There's a lot of professionals out there. For me, what works the best is getting my workout done first thing in the morning. I have more energy through the day. I seem to burn more calories. And, and then again, it's a thing of what you put in and what you put out. Mm -hmm. And as an athlete, I mean, I can go and I can look and see how many calories I burned last year. I think it's close to like 400,000 calories in a year. Well, That's a lot. But yeah, but I'm not a skinny guy. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I added those 400,000 calories in in food, which is great. But it's a matter of what you're putting in and what you're putting out. So a lot of times people will be like, oh, I worked out and I got on the treadmill and I burned 500 calories. I can go eat 500 calories. Well, if your body's burning 2,000 calories just being alive and you burn an extra 500 calories, you know, you're 2,500 calories. So if you're trying to lose weight, you're going to need to put in less than what you, what less than what you're expending, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a math equation. I mean, it, it, and it, it's almost like punching someone in the face. It's like you need to eat less or eat better. Take your vitamins, you know. Like I said, I like uh, the, the, the USANA whey protein. I use it instead of a lot of times getting ice cream. Now, mind you, I eat ice cream or yogurt or gelato or whatever you want to call it. I'm a big fan of ice cream. But at night, a lot of times I'll go make myself a shake with berries and bananas because I know it's healthier for me, especially before a race. You know, three months before a race, I'm typically watching everything that goes into my body. During the off season, it's good to add the weight for me. But a lot of times people are trying to get from a certain weight down to a weight. Mm -hmm. And it's all lifestyle changes. If you're not making a lifestyle change and you're doing a fad thing, it's not going to work. Like if someone's doing a 28-day challenge, the key is that some of those, um, you know, repetitive things that you're doing carry on past that 28 days. Mm -hmm. So whether it's getting up in the morning and going for a walk. I mean, before you run, you got to walk. Right, so walking around the block, walking around two blocks, walking around three blocks, then running around a block, running around two blocks. The whole idea behind the challenge is to get people into a repetitive nature, and that's kind of what I'm in as an athlete. And mind you, the off season I like. I like sleeping in. Uh, I, you know, I, I like my lattes uh, during the regular season. I mean, I even before like a race, like the race across America. I mean, I cut sugar out a month and a half before because I know it's bad for me, but I like it. Mm -hmm. So. It is, so it's fine, getting into a regimen and finding a balance in your life. And, you know, someone who's overweight is not going to lose. I mean, you can lose weight instantly, but it's typically going to come back. It's about making that lifestyle change and, you know, saying, hey, I'm going to lose a half a pound a week. Well, a half a pound a week over a year is 26 pounds. Mm -hmm. That's a lot for your body to adapt to. If you did it over three years, it's a big deal. I was, I was it eight, nine years ago, I was 217 pounds, and I think this morning I weighed in at 185. So, uh, you know, I, I was a bigger guy, but I made the healthy choices mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and got into a routine, and that, and that helped me out a lot. Well, congratulations on making that healthier lifestyle choice. It really does make a huge difference in our, in our bodies, and I'm sure you can, you're grateful that you can now ride all of these challenges and all of that stuff. Yeah, for sure. Being healthier is definitely, uh, I, I sleep, I sleep less, you know, I mean, I, I have more time to do things and I feel healthier, you know, I mean, it, it's just, it's just a different choice in life, I guess. And for the latte, since you like the lattes, have you ever tried using the, um, the chocolate shake, um, heating it up with milk and adding coffee to it? That, I have not. That actually works. It does. It does. It does. So you may be able so to chocolate change. shake mix with uh, coffee, with a little bit of coffee, and so like a shot of coffee, shot of espresso. Yeah. Okay. And so don't put the whole packet in. That'll be too much chocolate. So take about uh, four tablespoons of it. Okay. Milk and your coffee, and mix it all up, and you've got your latte. 
There you go. That sounds good. Yeah, we uh, we survived on on those shakes going across America. My crew kind of fell in love with them. We were lucky they they took care of my crew with a bunch of a bunch of those uh, the meal replacements. And, and a lot of times that's what we got. I used it for a source of, of food uh, across the country because liquids are much easier to digest than a, than solid foods. Very true. Very true. Well, thank you so much. Um, do you have anything else that you would like to add? No, no, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to interview me and, and learn a little bit more about USANA and USANA athletes. Well, thank you, and I look forward to talking to you again. For sure, thank you.